Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, or at least I'm most of Dave Kassler. I'm missing some teeth because I had a tooth extracted and it's still too swollen to uh, actually put my teeth in. So please forgive me as I kind of lisp to you uh, today. We want to get some videos done and out and uh, the teeth can take care of themselves. Um, welcome to this uh, episode of Ask Dave. We're going to answer a question from Phil, K-A-2-Q-I-K. Now he has a question. He says, I'm rebuilding my station and plan to make a number of zip line power B 12 volt power cables with Anderson power pole connectors. Yes, very good idea. I note that there are a number of gauge or size options for the zip line cable and power pole connectors. Yes. You made a video on making DC power cables with Anderson power pole connectors a few years ago. as Dave number 44. Has it been that long? Wow. And that is very helpful. My question is, what size or gauge of zip line should I get to be able to power a 100 watt radio and other common accessories? I would prefer to make all the cables out of the same connector size and cable gauge to keep it simple. Thanks for the great job you do with your QST column. I do write a column every month for QST and your videos. Thanks from Phil. Now, um, before we jump in to answer Phil's question, I'd like to pay a special thank you to Sean Fow, who is one of my newest patrons. You too can become a patron of this channel by going to patreon.com slash ke0og and pick a method that works for you. Now let's take a look at his question. This is a cord I made. Uh, black and white DC cable is usually like this. You can get it easily from PowerWorks or any of a million other suppliers. And I put this together. These go on the battery in the truck. This is a 25 amp fuse in here. And these are uh, where you have uh, uh, heat shrink tubing over it where the solder joints are. And then this will go through the firewall or around the firewall back into the motorhome itself uh, where I have a small uh, battery maintainer. The problem that we run into here in the wilderness is that a lead acid battery at fully charged will not freeze till it gets down to below about minus 40. Okay, minus 40 Fahrenheit. And minus 40 centigrade, by the way, is identical to minus 40 Celsius. That's where the two curves cross. And what happened to the battery was it had a load on it that I didn't know about, a phantom load, and so it discharged. And as it discharges, the sulfuric acid in it gradually becomes more dilute until the point where it is finally just water at the point that the battery is fully discharged and water freezes at 32 degrees and it was much colder than that here and so the batter the battery froze which ruined it so I had to go pay the money to get a new uh, battery for the thing and uh, got that and uh, now I'm going to put a battery maintainer on it so that it will always stay uh, fully maintained. Okay, now this is a standard power pole connector. Okay, you can get it up here so you can kind of see it. Uh, it's, it happens to be genderless. You can plug any two of them together. Okay, that's the nice thing about them. They are kind of standard in ham radio. For a lot of things and I convert even my non ham things into uh, these. Now what he asks about is how big the zip cord should be. There are very strong thoughts about this for your normal household electrical wiring. 14 gauge, by the way the gauge numbers are kind of weird. As the number goes up the size of the wire goes down, okay? So a 14 gauge wire is thinner than a 12 gauge wire is thinner 
than a 10 gauge wire. Those are the three you normally see in household wiring. A 14 gauge wire can carry up to 15, maybe 20 amps, but they usually have a circuit breaker of 15. Your 12 gauge wire can carry 20 amps to 25, and normally you'd have a circuit breaker at 20. Your 10 gauge wire can carry 30 or slightly more, and is usually the circuit breaker is 30 amps. Okay? Now, the I know this is a little hard to understand because Ohm's law, we're all used to Ohm's law, and as the cable gets thicker, the resistance goes down. But where's the cutoff point? Well, in um, electrician speak, a wire has something called an ampacity. That's a term hardly ever used in ham radio. The ampacity is the safe amount of current that a wire can carry continuously. Okay, uh, the wire may warm a little bit, but not to the point where it's going to start a fire. It may not even warm much at all. Now, uh, electrical extension cords, I like to buy cords that are uh, 14 gauge wire because they'll carry the full 15 amps out wherever it needs to be carried. A lot of your less expensive extension cords are only 16 gauge. And so you'll wonder why it gets warm after you've been doing some electric hedge trimming for a while. That's because it's too small of an extension cord. By the way, extension cords seem to lead to a lot of fires every year. And by the way, the National Electric Code is written by the fire prevention people, a group the fire insurers write the National Electric Code so that if you follow that code, they have fewer house fires to pay out. Okay. Now, here is your rule of thumb for DC. For a 100 watt radio that's going to be taking a maximum of 22, 23 amps, okay, on transmit, and even that only if you're doing a 100% duty cycle mode, 12 gauge wire is quite sufficient and that's what I use on mine. Now you will find that some radios will ship with 14 gauge. That's because they're counting on you using it for single sideband and the amount of current varies wildly and averages to something pretty low, five or six amps during transmit uh, at a 100 watt single sideband. It has peaks, but nothing else. I would recommend using 12 gauge wire on all circuits where you're gonna do 100 uh, watts. Now, if you are uh, going to do like, um, I've got a little um, SWR meter that has a light in it. You don't need to go that heavy at all. I've got a spool of uh, 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 zip wire, uh, DC wiring, that's 16 gauge that is much smaller and uh, that's what I think I use that or either that or 18 gauge for that video light right up there which runs off the solar system. Okay so um, I'd run your little accessories like antenna tuners da 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 da. You can go 16 or 18 gauge on that. By the way the cables are the same either way. The cable the I bought this from PowerWorks. This is a little container with a lid that is awful hard to get off. I suppose that's good. You don't want this to spill. But what you have in here are the black and white pieces. Uh, you've got your little uh, metal inserts that go into them and the little rods that hold them together. There's uh, 50 of them. These are not super cheap, but uh, I use them for everything. These are, this is the standard in ham radio. So that if you make your radio with the power cord capable of handling one of these, it can be used interoperably in a number of places where all the power is available on Anderson power pole connectors. Um, and these are 30 amp 
connectors. Okay, now uh, they can, you can put any size wire in this. What I would suggest you do is you put a bigger size wire, or I'm sorry, a real small wire into one of these here. You will want to solder it in place. Okay, crimp it and solder it. And then you'll need to use like a tiny screwdriver to actually push it in all the way until it snaps. Okay. On the, on the big ones, like the one I did yesterday there, you just push the wire in and it snaps. But for small wire, that won't do that. Now, why would I use the same connector for something that takes a very small draw? Interoperability, okay? Interoperability. Now, um, so I think I've answered the question that we've got here. Um, let me show you something over here. This right here that's apparently died oh it's not on this right here is the uh, reference station uh, power distribution panel it's called the rig runner 4006u it has two five volt outputs the main input comes in down here and that comes from my local battery no, that comes from the power supply. The power supply is right there. And then you put different fuse sizes in here, depending on what you're fusing. And then that way, if you have thin wires, you can put a small fuse uh, to get what it is that you're, you're looking for. And this is my little light for back here. Okay, so that's where they're used. I have another distribution panel over here. This is the one for my solar, okay, and it's fed by this great big fat thing here, okay, and comes in over here, and uh, you can replace the fuses anytime that you need to, okay? So that's why we go with the power pole connectors. I tried to show you a little bit more uh, than Phil asked for about uh, wires and passity. So for uh, the 20 amp radios, which usually can go up to 24. So for the 20 amp radios that can usually go up to 24, uh, you'd use 12 gauge. You could get away with 14 gauge, but I think you should go with 12 gauge. 14 gauge will take you up to about 15 amps. So you can use that for like a VHF, uh, mobile radio or something like that. Uh, smaller gauge for little tiny things that take 12 volts, like my little standalone SWR meter that has a lighted scale, takes uh, 12 volts and I just use 18 gauge or, or whatever I might have, okay? So, there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel financially, you certainly may do so by going to decastlercom slash support. There are several ways available, including Patreon, also a one-time tip, or a recurring tip, like a subscription that you can sign up for. So, until we next meet, 73.